Hey guys, Ryan here from On Property, your daily dose of property education and inspiration. If you want our free report on 10 positive cash flow properties in Australia, real properties that have been listed on the market, go to onproperty.com.au forward slash free to get free access today. Now I haven't done any filming or any podcast episodes in about a month and that is a really long period for me to go without podcasting. Generally I podcast every single day and I'm trying to get back into that now. So hopefully this will be day one and there'll be another podcast tomorrow. The reason that I haven't been around and that I've had such a long period of absence isn't because I was on holidays in the Bahamas or because I was sick or something like that. Uh, nothing really interesting. I've just been working on On Property Plus. That's the sales page on my computer there. On Property Plus is my premium membership website, and I've been doing a lot of work to upgrade that. I've created new pricing tiers and added new functionality to some of the tools in there, whole bunch of different stuff. I'll get to it at a later date. I won't waste your time with it today. Today, I want to talk about how to invest for cash flow because investing for cash flow is very different when to investing for growth. Now, like Ben Turner said in episode 102 and 103 when I interviewed him, Australia really is a growth market for most investors. Even people who invest in positive cash flow property really want to see some sort of capital growth return on their property. So they're not just investing for cash flow, they want to see some sort of capital growth, otherwise they're not really happy with their investment. And today I want to talk about cash flow exclusively and excluding capital growth. You know, maybe that can be a cherry on top, but how do we invest for cash flow and what sort of analysis do we need to do if we want to invest for cash flow? Firstly, let me say that investing for cash flow is different than investing for growth. What we are looking at is return on investment as a percentage of the money that you put into the deal. A lot of people call this your cash on cash return. How much cash are you getting back versus how much cash do you put into the deal? So we're not looking at, say we buy a property that's $500,000. We're not looking at how much we're getting back compared to $500,000. If we only put $100,000 into the deal, then we're looking at how much cash are we getting back versus the $100,000 that we're putting in. Or maybe even more importantly, we're looking at the return of investment. So not return on investment, but return of investment. How fast can you get your money back? Because if you invest in something, whether it be a property or shares or whatnot, if you can get your money back quickly, let's say again, we invest that $100,000 and you get that $100,000 back, well you can then use that to go forth and to invest again, to invest in another asset or something like that. So investing for cash flow is different. We're not looking at percentage return of the whole investment. We're kind of looking at cash on cash return or return of investment. So what are some ways that you can invest for cash flow? Well, firstly, what we talk about a lot on this website is positive cash flow property. Positive cash flow property is when your property brings in more income than you have to spend in expenses. So that includes things like your interest rates on your mortgage, that includes things like maintenance and insurances, council rates, strata or body corporate fees if you're in a unit complex, and a whole bunch of other expenses that you're going to have on that property. So if you're getting more rental income coming in than you're spending in expenses, Well, that creates a surplus of cash flow known as a positive cash flow property. And you can then work out, well, what positive cash flow am I getting and what cash on cash return am I going to get from that? You can do that yourself or you can access the advanced property calculator, which is inside On Property Plus at onproperty.com.au forward slash plus if you are interested in that. Other ways you can invest for cash flow is investing in stocks for dividends. So I've got some friends that do this. Rather than investing in stocks to get the growth of those stocks over time, they invest in the stocks in order to access the dividends and to get the dividends paid out to them. So they're getting the cash flow, regular cash flow from the dividends, and that's how they're measuring their investment. Again, another thing you can do is invest in cash. 
And obviously the cash on cash return is going to be really easy to measure if you invest in cash. If the banks are offering 4% per annum for the amount of money you put in, well obviously you're going to get 4% back. And so it's a really easy calculation there. You know, not a lot you can do to add value to your investment or to speed things up. It's generally a pretty slow way to invest. And because of inflation and the devaluing of money over time, a lot of people do advise against that. But I can't give financial advice, I'm not saying it's a bad investment or a good investment. I'm not a financial advisor, but when you're investing for cash, just take into account the fact that because of inflation over time, it means that money becomes worth less. You know, hundred dollars to my grandparents when they were children was worth a hell of a lot more than $100 is going to be worth to my kids. Another thing you can do, number four, is to invest in silent business partnerships. So if someone's running a business and you can invest capital up front into that business and you can then receive cash profit from that as the business generates a profit. Now obviously with new businesses and things like that, you're talking about high levels of risk. So I personally wouldn't go into a business and invest in a business if I didn't know a lot about it, uh, but that's still something you can do. You could be an active business investor. So rather than being a silent partner where you don't have anything to say in the business, you could start a business of your own or you could um, go in with someone else, provide funds and play an active role in that business. Now this is not just a straight investment that's really passive, we are going to invest cash and get cash back but businesses do spin off great cash flow if they are profitable and so that can be a great way to invest for cash flow and lastly I just want to talk about some alternative investments things that I haven't looked into in great detail so I'm not going to go into them in great detail but I have heard about them and more specifically heard about them through core and Helene you can check them out at bluehorizonsproperty.com. They're not sponsoring this episode, but I know that they offer a lot of these alternative investments. So they're probably a good point of call if this is something that you're interested in. So they have alternative investments in things like ATM machines. So this is where you, you provide the funds to purchase an ATM machine. Someone else goes out there and gets a contract, maybe with a 7-Eleven or maybe at a large shopping center, and then they pay you uh, cash. I guess you, you probably wouldn't call it a dividend, but they pay you an investment sum that you can get back because you helped put up the capital for, for that ATM machine. The same sort of thing happens with shipping containers. Uh, you can put up upfront capital in order to purchase shipping containers. Someone else is probably going to rent them out and then you can get a portion of that back. And so there's, there's a lot of different alternative investments there too that I'm aware of that you could look into in more detail if that was something that you're interested in. But again, investing for cash flow is a lot more about your cash on cash return and what cash you're getting back and how fast you're getting your investment back rather than looking at, well, what are the growth drivers of an area that I'm investing in? Will the asset go up in value? You're not so much focusing on the asset. Obviously, that's great and that's part of the investment, uh, but the cash flow is what you're concerned about, the rental yield, what the rental demand's like, how much rent you're going to get back, whether rents will continue to go up over time, etc etc so that I hope that that has been useful for you if you want to see the full blog post and transcription of this episode go to onproperty.com.au forward slash 195 and again if you want to get access to that free report of 10 real positive cash flow properties go to onproperty.com.au forward slash free and sign up today so until tomorrow remember that your long-term success is only achieved one day at a time 